Welcome back again, everyone. It's Dina Calmetti here. And for today's news, I first would like to talk about the U.S. and China. As it is being reported that apparently a U.S. spy plane crossed into a no-fly zone in the Pacific on Tuesday and disrupted the People's Liberation Army drills, according to Chinese officials. China's defense ministry said that an American U-2 aircraft engaged in a purely provocative act by entering a no-fly zone enforced by the Northern Theater of the People's Liberation Army. U.S. military officials did acknowledge the U-2 flight, but said that it was within the accepted international rules and regulations governing aircraft flights. Beijing, however, cast the incident as dangerous and potentially deadly and strongly suggested that the U.S. was attempting to surveil Chinese military activities. The Chinese Defense Ministry said on its website that the move severely encroached on China's sovereignty, heavily interrupted China's ordinary military operations, and could easily cause misjudgment and even result in accidents. Chinese officials also vowed to take concrete actions to defend the country's sovereignty in the future. In the meantime, Beijing launched two medium-range missiles into the South China Sea in a warning to the U.S. The move came on Wednesday morning, one day after China said the U.S. U-2 spy plane entered the no-fly zone. A source close to the Chinese military is understood to have told local media that the missile launch was intended to send a warning to the U.S. And another source told the South China Morning Post that this is China's response to the potential risks brought by the increasing frequent incoming U.S. warplanes and military vessels in the South China Sea. China doesn't want the neighboring countries to misunderstand Beijing's goals. It was also understood that the missiles were aimed at showcasing China's ability to deny any force entering the South China Sea. And Reuters is reporting that in the last three weeks, China has announced four separate exercises along its coast. Along with other exercises, it said were aimed at the current security situation across the Taiwan Strait. Meanwhile, Taiwan said its surface-to-air missiles have tracked approaching Chinese fighters, details Taiwan does not normally give. Addressing the Chinese exercises, Taiwan's defense ministry said on Tuesday that the closer Chinese jets get to the island, the more actively Taipei would respond, though it would not escalate conflict nor trigger an incident. It goes on further to report that a Chinese military expert said it was very rare and possibly the first time multiple Chinese exercises were taking place at the same time. By simultaneously conducting drills in the three seas, it means that China is testing its ability to fight enemies coming from three directions at the same time. For example, from Taiwan, Japan, and from the U.S., from the South. And historically speaking, frequent drills are a clear predictor of war. And a accidental encounter setting off a broader conflict are rising mainly between the increased U.S. and Chinese military activities in the region. Neither side wants to start a conflict. The fundamentals have not changed much, but the frequent activity do increase the chances of an accidental conflict. And China's foreign ministry said in a statement sent to Reuters that we have the determination and capability to stop any activities aimed at separating Taiwan from China. And speaking of exercises, despite border hostilities and soured relations, the militaries of India, China, and Pakistan will come together in Russia to participate in combat exercises in September. The major exercise to access the war readiness of the armies, along with the Russian armed forces, will be held from the 15th to the 26th in southern Russia. It goes on even further to report that Russia has invited the Shanghai Cooperation Organization members, in addition to 11 other countries. So it certainly seems that China is preparing for a war. And I don't mean to say that to sound sensational, but if we look at the evidence before us, and even experts are stating that it's very unusual for China to have this many exercises in so many different regions at the same time. And then we have Russia, who is a very close ally to China. It just seems like a lot of preparation is taking place. But with that said, I will continue to follow these reports and bring you updates. But let's talk about Turkey and Greece. It is being reported that Greece and its EU allies held war games in the Mediterranean on Wednesday, while Turkey conducted drills with the U.S. Navy nearby. As the row between the two neighbors over gas and maritime borders ratched up another notch, 
Greece and Turkey are ancient rivals, with a litany of disputes despite both being members of the NATO military alliance. They nearly went to war over some uninhabited islets in 1996, and the threat of another conflict between them could imperil Europe's secure access to a wealth of new energy resources and draw in nations as Egypt and war-torn Libya. NATO Secretary General said he was personally regularly in contact with Turkey and Greece. The German foreign minister shuttled between Athens and Greece on Tuesday in a bid to get talks back on track and avoid what he described as a catastrophe. But his efforts failed to secure a firm promise from either side to drop their sable rattling and engage in constructive talks. President Erdogan warned Greece on Wednesday that Turkey would make no concessions on that which is ours. Greece was able to secure the support of France, which became the EU's biggest military power after Britain formally left the bloc. In three days of war games starting on Wednesday, that also include Italy and Cyprus. The Turkish Defense Ministry conducted its own drills with an Italian Navy vessel on Tuesday and the same U.S. destroyer that took part in exercises with Turkey had staged air and sea maneuvers with the Greek Navy on Monday. The seeming shifts in allegiance highlight Rome and Washington's desire to avoid challenging Erdogan because of Turkey's importance to the conflicts in Libya and the Middle East. But France has joined Greece in shadowing the Turkish vessels and is openly warning Erdogan against overplaying his hand. The French defense minister stated that the eastern Mediterranean should not be a playground for the ambitions of some. It's a shared asset. And finally, it reports that the Turkish president stated on Wednesday that we invite our counterparts to beware that any error could pave the way to their ruin. And over in Israel, the Israeli military and intelligence assessments see Turkey as a growing threat. Turkey continues to challenge Israel on a variety of fronts, with hosting Hamas and the organization's planned attacks on Israel from Turkey. And this was reported from The Telegraph just last year. But according to a new report, Turkey has granted citizenship to Hamas operatives. In November, Turkey signed a deal with the Tripoli-based government in Libya and has begun sending arms and Syrian mercenary to Libya. And on the eve of the surprise announcement that Israel and the UAE would normalize relations, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told Greece's foreign minister that Israel stood by Greece in disputes with Turkey. This brings Israel into the alliance of states that oppose Turkey's increasing aggression in the region. So this really isn't a surprise between Israel and Turkey. And we have to remember that Turkey is one of the characters that's listed in the Gog-Magog War in the Book of Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39, along with Russia and Iran. So just something to keep in the back of your mind. But speaking of Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said on Wednesday that Israel views with great gravity the latest flare-up on the Lebanese border and pledged a tough response in the event of further incidents. He said we shall react forcibly to any attack against us. And I advise Hezbollah not to test Israel's strength. Hezbollah is once again endangering Lebanon due to its aggression. Israel said earlier that it had launched airstrikes against Hezbollah observation posts in Lebanon after shots were fired from across the border towards its troops the previous evening. The border flare-up came hours after Lebanon rejected an Israeli call to reform the UN peacekeeping forces, which patrols the border, ahead of a UN Security Council vote to renew its mandate. The Israeli army had said earlier that a security incident was unfolding near the UN demarcated border between the two countries and urged residents to take shelter. And finally, it reports that the Hezbollah leader calls Tuesday night's exchange of fire with Israel an important and sensitive event. He said what happened yesterday in South Lebanon is an important and sensitive measure for us, but I will not comment on it. I will instead leave it until a later point in time. So definitely a lot of tension happening all around the world. And I wish I could say that tensions are going to simmer. But now that wouldn't really go with Bible prophecy, would it? We're told that we will see wars and rumors of wars and distress of nations and that there would be a lot of tension in the Middle East, especially with Israel. And that is exactly what we are seeing. And just as a side note, because I have promised a subscriber that I would address this in my next video, but apparently there were rumors that Kim Jong-un has been in a coma for months and has given some of his power to his sister. However, there are pictures that have appeared to show a healthy-looking Kim leading a meeting on Tuesday 
Now, these photos were syndicated through the Associated Press, which noted that the independent journalists were not given access to the event and that the images couldn't be independently verified. But for right now, they're saying that he's still alive and healthy. And as always, I will continue to follow these reports and bring you updates. Please do leave your comments below this video. And thank you, everybody, for watching. God bless. Thank you.